obese authoritarians, and gentlemen. Folks, I'd like to address uh, an argument I've seen bandied about on YouTube a lot lately. I mean, it's been going on for a long time, but uh, a lot more lately. Uh, some progressives, uh, obese progressives, taking uh, issue with uh, people like Mitt Romney and Ted Nugent um, doing whatever they could to stay out of the Vietnam War, yet being gung-ho for U.S. intervention abroad on this day and age. They miss an important point, which I'll bring up later. Would I consider it hypocritical for anyone to do everything to be in favor of the Vietnam War and at the same time do everything they can to avoid it and then be in favor of a lot of U.S. intervention abroad in this day and age where we have an all-volunteer force? Yes, I would consider that hypocritical. But they miss an important point that I'm going to bring up later. We've got uh, Chunk Uyghur, uh, the obese Chunk Uyghur of the... Uh, Young turds who made a lot of hay about Mitt Romney and uh, uh, Ted Nugent avoiding uh, the Vietnam War, doing what they can to avoid the draft. That's the key word there, draft. And, and I watched those two young turds videos. And not once did they bring up the authoritarianism that's inherent in a military draft. And then we got a comment by the non-doctor McCain of Sue X. Um, Who's uh, who? May, who got angry about this? I blotted out a lot of her comment because uh, it was just she went on a absolute had a fit. Uh, but I got the the uh, most important parts of it there. S but uh, there were a lot of people, for example, who opposed the Vietnam War uh, that weren't Republicans. And there's a lot of them who would not care for this government authoritarianism. Uh, a lot of these people, until you know, pre-1973, if you were sent to a conflict that the U.S. was engaged in, uh, it was a good chance that you were sent there via a draft, via selective service. You weren't vol. Now, granted, we did have a lot of people volunteer, but the 800-pound gorilla in the room that they miss is the fact that a lot of people were forced to uh, go off to a, a war. And, and like Korea and Vietnam, uh, Korea under Truman and his Democrat Congress, that war was never even declared, yet we sent, uh, yet tens of thousands of people died in that conflict, uh, which is far, imagine if Iraq and Afghanistan had those uh, body counts under Bush. Imagine the caterwauling from progressives over that. And there was a draft in place uh, during those two wars. The Vietnam War was ramped up by Kennedy and LBJ even before we officially declared war in 1964. And then a lot of people were sent to Vietnam, which had no bearing on U.S. national security. Neither did our war in the Korean Peninsula. Yet thousands of people died, tens of thousands, a lot more than body counts in Iraq and Afghanistan, which were conducted with volunteer forces. So they missed that, uh, and I think they missed it on purpose. Uh, Woodrow Wilson was uh, a Democrat president. The House was basically even at the time. Uh, it was split between uh, Republican and Democrat control. Slight Republican advantage under uh, Woodrow Wilson, and the Senate was under Democrat control. But May 18th, 1917, Congress gave Wilson the power to draft soldiers and to send them off to World War I, a lot of them against their own will those called, uh, often referred to as conscientious objectors. You even have FDR, great Democrat icon FDR, who was uh, a big-time authoritarian, signed an executive order, which he said, in order to promote the most effective mobilization and utilization of the national manpower and to eliminate so far as possible waste of manpower due to disruptive recruitment and undue migration of workers, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and statutes, including the first War Powers Act, 1941, and the Selective Training and Service Act of 1940, that's the key part, as amended as President of the United States and as Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, it is hereby ordered as follows. And part of that reads, the Secretary of War and the Secretary of Navy shall, after consultation with the Chairman, determine the number of men required to be selected each month in order to fulfill the total respective requirements of the Army and Navy as approved by the President. The Chairman shall furnish the required number of men through the Selective Service System, which means if they don't have enough volunteers, you will be volunteered. Now, I'm not going to debate the merits of World War I 
or World War II versus Vietnam versus Korea. That's not the point of this video. It's to uh, address government authoritarianism that these progressives often, often leave out. And they make it seem like they try to frame this as a Republican versus Democrat or a left versus right issue. That's baloney. That's BS. It's government authoritarianism versus anti-government, I guess you could say, or smaller government, lack of government authoritarianism. And they often leave that out, and I think they probably do it on purpose. So it's not a left versus right issue. You know, forget the left-right paradigm. It's, it's a, a government uh, authoritarianism versus lack thereof. Uh, what also should be mentioned is the founders didn't intend us to have uh, perpetual large standing armies. They did not want us to get caught up in entangling alliances. Now the Navy, that's a different story. The Navy is supposed to be maintained year-round perpetually. I support a very strong, even though it might be, it's probably a little too large, a strong Navy. An army, a standing army, not the intention of the founders because, as you can see, with a standing army you are more likely to go to war for nefarious or good reasons. So, and you can see that in the draft. Uh, what also should be mentioned, Jimmy Carter pardoned these conscientious objectors. Uh, Jimmy Carter gave them a free pass. He pardoned them. N you know, there are cer were certain exceptions to that, but Jimmy Carter pardoned them. And uh, selective service, a registration with that, was ended in 1975. But it was resumed again in 1980 by Carter in response to the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, and it continues today. And here's the problem. If we stretch ourselves too thin when we're getting awful close to that, and I, I'm not doing this to scare, if you're under the age of, say, 26 right now, I'm not doing this to scare you, but if we stretch ourselves too thin, it's possible. And Charlie Rangel is bringing this up again. I don't know if this is gonna gain any traction, but if we stretch ourselves too thin, you might see a military draft, it's possible, instituted again where you could get sent against your own will to a faraway land to fight in a war that may or may not have anything to do with U.S. national security. And I'd say Korea and Vietnam definitely, without a doubt, qualify as two wars that the U.S. got involved in that had no bearing on U.S. national security whatsoever, yet a Democrat president in both cases and a Democrat Congress in both cases without congressional approval, sent people to Vietnam and Korea against their own will. So yes, I would consider it hypocritical for anyone to support the Vietnam War and then do everything they can to get away from it and avoid it and then support this interventionist foreign policy now. What also should be mentioned, but like I said, they avoid the fact that it was the government, a draft. I shouldn't be forced uh, anybody, you shouldn't be forced to, you know, Vietnam, like I said, ridiculous. Uh, why send young men over to Vietnam in a war that had nothing to do with our national security? I'm sorry, I sound like a broken record. So that's the issue that needs to be addressed here. Uh, not this, uh, stupid, uh, that McCain is through X and the obese chunk Uyghur are trying to frame it as a Republican versus Democrat issue. So we, we, I think we need to end uh, conscription period because uh, we are going to, eventually we will get a draft again if the U.S. government continues these wars. I, uh, lastly, I'll mention if these uh, progressives were fair, they'd mention the body count in Afghanistan because uh, more people have died January 1st, 2010 to the present day in Afghanistan than did during all of Bush's. In fact, that Obama even eclipsed that a long time ago than what uh, during Afghanistan under Bush. So if you guys want to start counting bodies piling up, well, you need to look at that. And Obama is an interventionist as well, as I have exposed. See the videos that are going across your, your screen. And, uh, you know, Obama has no problem having over 250,000 U.S. troops stationed abroad, but they don't bring that up either because I guess that's not a big deal. And uh, please remember our military is all volunteer now. So anybody who it did end up in Iraq and Afghanistan, and that doesn't mean if, if you volunteered, that doesn't mean you can't object and say, hey, I don't think the Iraq war and Afghanistan wars were worth it. That doesn't mean you can't do that, but I'm just trying to frame the issue in this way. Draft, 
versus volunteer. So uh, that stupid argument, I don't think, even if uh, Ted Nugent is a hypocrite, which I, you know, it appears he is, or Mitt Romney, uh, that you're avoiding the crux of the argument and you're missing. And obviously, they don't. McCain and Sturex doesn't know her history very well uh, because she wasn't educated. So I hope that helped you out, and hopefully you learned something from that. So if you have a progressive use that argument on you, there, hopefully you can use this as a response. Have a nice day, and don't thank me now for correcting you, McStupid. And you, Chunk, you fat...